Hello, good afternoon. I'm wandering around Lisbon all on my own at the moment. My other half is super busy today, so I'm out on my own. I've been wanting to visit the Tile Museum for so long. I did go like in 1999 or something like that. Somebody wanted to go, a friend of mine. She really wanted to go and I was like, the Tile Museum, that sounds all dusty and boring. And then we got in there and was like, whoa, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she might've had a point. So I'm revisiting and it's actually not raining and I've actually felt the sun on my skin since I've been out walking today. Google Maps is more or less my best friend at the moment. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving using it to navigate around the place. It's taken me along quite a back street route off the normal tourist trail. Finally, a good drying day for the laundry. Google Maps says we have to turn right here. Oh, it's lovely to see all the laundry drying. <laughs> it's kind of like work in progress, you know. An action shot in very slow motion. Round here next, I can hear children on their playtime break, probably for the afternoon. I think it's too late for lunch break. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure what time they have it. It's taking me down some steps now. I can smell something dead. I think I did a mouse or a rat or something maybe in there. I don't know. There's that little allotment maybe. Could be somebody's private garden. We've got some sports pitches there. Should I say sports pitch? No, I think there's two. The river there. A lot of cranes as well. Right, let's go down. Oh, look, the nasturtiums are overtaking this walkway. They're beautiful, aren't they? Luscious, big, flat leaves. Edible, in case you didn't know. You probably do know. We used to have them in our garden at home when I was a child. That's how come I know what they are. I wanted to say a big thank you to Kathy, by the way, who sent me a PayPal donation to the channel. I think it was around my birthday, actually, so thank you very much for that. So that helps to do things like today, because it's a five euro entry and the castle was 15, so it's all going towards those adventures and then I'm able to share them back with you all. The way I think about Google Maps is like, as a walker, you know, not from driving, is it's like an interactive with real life fitness app, which gets you out and about and seeing new things that otherwise you might maybe not have the confidence to go and explore if you weren't confident about your route and maybe how many minutes left you had to get there and things like that. Cause it always tells you, you know, 11 minutes left till we get there, that sort of thing. Oh, there's all the trains down there. Look at all those, just sort of waiting, dormantly lurking. I'm uh, just having a quick stop looking at the cranes working there. Loading stuff onto boats I think. Anyway onwards. I like walking to the places when I'm going visiting sightseeing places because I get my steps quota up for the day so it doubles as my fitness for the day. And of course you do get to see a lot more as well and take in more detail. What a very narrow building. It must be all corridor inside. There's windows on it. What? That's the skinniest building I think I've ever seen in my life. God, this is the thing. You walk around Lisbon and you just keep coming across these incredible edifices. That one looks like it should have had a, I don't know, a cone bit on the top. It's got a flat top there, but a rather magnificent looking collection of bells there. Oh, and a very fast bus. I'm beginning to wonder if that actually is the tile museum. <laughs> I might need to go and investigate. Not quite, but we're very, very close. The doors are firmly closed, as you see. Here it is. Do you know, I think, I think that might have been it, but that's the entrance there. So I'm very pleased about that. It's open till six and it's about 20 to three now. So I have managed to get out in time to do something this afternoon. So I'm very pleased about that. I was working this morning. Here we go then. Let's see what's what. I hope I can film in here. It didn't occur to me to check. That'll be a bit of a bummer if I can't run it. But if that is the case, that is the case and we will work around it. There's a QR code in tiles. If I keep still, maybe you can activate it. No idea what it needs to. I love that, that the ancient is really massively married in with the modern. Done. Look, I probably could touch it because it's not super ancient, isn't it? Like, that's so cool. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go in, buy my ticket, and uh, get having a look around. It was eight euros to get in, it must have gone up. Maybe the website was out of date that I checked earlier. So, I'm on a massive um, zoomy lens at the moment. There are a few signs here and there about specific things not to film or photograph, and indications not to use a flash. I think I'm all right with the the video camera for a lot of it. I've been in here a little while actually, just awestruck with beauty and not picking up the camera yet. But yeah, I'm not gonna fill this full of history and facts, but just to briefly say that in Portugal, glazed tile pavements were used since the 13th century and they started out quite plain. They got gradually more complex, basically. Oh my gosh, this one's from the 1500s. I've just been standing here staring at it for ages, just awestruck by how absolutely just lovely it is. Like just how aesthetically pleasing. I can't believe how old it is. It's so well preserved. I can see I'm gonna be in here a while if I'm this awestruck by just like the first thing I see. <laughs> no, actually it's not the first thing I've seen because I've been in a gallery already full of contemporary like ceramics and it was absolutely fantastic, but I didn't film that. From Seville in Spain, these are 1500s. Again, I just can't believe how old they are. It's amazing. I am a true sucker for the old stuff, I tell you what. 
I get all awestruck. <laughs> Initial impressions so far have been quite good with regards to accessibility. There are ramps up to the galleries, for instance, so you don't have to go up steps. And here we've got a panel that's good for people with visual impairment. We've got these raised things you can run your fingers over, and there's braille as well as just ordinary writing underneath. And what does that mean there? Does, is that like some kind of hearing aid loop thingy? These look like the sort of things my mum would knit and crochet into a blanket, you know. I wonder if they make patterns for knitters and crochets. That's these historic designs. I think that would be interesting. We should have them in the gift shop to my feedback. I've got a feeling we're onto the big guns now. Look at that massive one up there. My goodness me. Wowie, look at that. It's almost right up to the ceiling. It's a nativity scene, isn't it? That cow's getting quite a close look in there, isn't he? Breathing his bovine breath all over the newly born infant. Mm. He's not the only one, he's got a friend as well. Also equally interested. I was thinking this door knocker representation actually looks quite annoyed. He also looks like it doesn't quite match as well, as if it's done by different painters and stuck together, you know. For those that like to pause and read. 1580, it's amazing. 1580, what a different world that must have been. I wonder what other delights I'm gonna come across. Loads of these are kind of late 1500s, early 1600s. Quite a few of them are repeating patterns, but they're just so pleasing to the eye to see. I'm gonna move on to the next gallery. Do you see what I mean about these ramps? They're good. I approve. Seventeenth century in here. <laughs> they look quite childlike, don't they? Almost cartoon esque it's from sixteen thirty to sixteen forty. For those monsters down there, they look like they might gobble up the sailors, don't they, with those great big mouths? I wonder if they were supposed to be basking sharks or something, because they wouldn't have known an awful lot about the aquatic life, would they, in those days? Gosh, it's just breathtaking spectacle after breathtaking spectacle in here. I'm really enjoying it. Hey, if you look through here, you can see a behind the scenesy bit. Look, all the tiles there. This bit I'm about to enter is the church, actually. Again, we've got good accessibility here. Some of the rooms you've got to go out the way you came in because there's a step down on like one of the exits, but overall it's been very good. Good grief. Oh my goodness. That's the most magnificent thing I've seen in ages. And I've seen some pretty magnificent things lately as well. Let's go up. I was just waiting for people to take photographs. Strictly no flash photography in this area. Oh my goodness, look at that, all that. Well, gold. I think I'm going to have to bring my other half here when he's not so busy. I don't think he uh, was appealed by the sound of, you know, the tile museum, because this isn't what you expect by a tile museum, is it? I mean, you just think of tiles and cabinets, but it's so much more than that. I feel bad walking on this bit. It's definitely the floor, though. Piece. Ew, what are those heads doing there? I absolutely love that tile picture there because of the depth that it has, the way it goes back, the perspective and all that, you know. I feel like I could just step into it. I wish I could film everything in here, but it would be a very, very, very long vlog. <laughs> and people would probably stop watching, but oh my goodness, if you like this kind of thing, I recommend a visit. I've got a feeling a lot of this I'm not going to film just because there's going to be so, so much of it. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> I love my exploring days. I really do. They're my favourite. These cows do seem to be featuring quite heavily in these, you know, 1600s works. That dog there, look. What's doing? Did I say it was a cow? I think it's a bull because, you know, 
You can see what's happening there. Mm. Oh my goodness. There's something I've found out about me and that's I really like stuff with a lot of busyness to it. I think we've got a bit of a nativity scene going on here, but it's a much, well, I don't know. It's not, is it? Because it's not in a stable. We've got, appears to be a baby Jesus in a manger and an adoring mother and Joseph looking on. We've got a hurdy-gurdy player. Now I saw something very much like that the other day in the Basilica, actually. Quite a few musicians here, bands of musicians. Oh, that one's breastfeeding. Good. The man's took is giving it a funny look, though. So this is the convent of Madre de Deus Crib. It's painted terracotta from between 1700 and 1730. Thought I'd done all the magnificent churchy parts, but clearly not. There's more. I wonder if this is where the choir would have been. More ramps. And there are lifts as well. You saw me going upstairs, but there was a lift. Do you know, it's quite easy almost to overlook the tiles that are down here in the corridors. They're absolutely everywhere you look. You know, when we peeped through the hole and saw the behind the scenes, there's the behind the scenes there. It's absolutely stuffed full of tiles in wooden boxes, I think. So I wonder what's going on there. Restoration or whether it's new vines that have come in. I don't know. I'm going to continue on anyways. I'm absolutely loving it. It's getting gradually more modern as we go up through the floors. This is what I would consider to be the absolute climax of the whole place for me personally. This huge tiled panorama is actually of the city before the earthquake destroyed so much of it in 1755. I'm going to have a good old lingering long look at it now off camera but there's interpretations here with little bits of information giving examples of things that you can see a little bit of information it is huge oh, and there's a 70s version with the the boat there the ferry boat <laughs> i think i'm definitely winning the award for the slowest person to look at those in the whole museum i'm fascinated by the little buildings and things i think they might be building boats there look at those ships there wow Near a train going past. You know, all this is filled in with a lot more stuff now, you know, things have really filled in. That's the Tortugalang there, that's a really, really famous place. Do you know, in all the times I've come to Lisbon, I've never actually paid the ticket price to go into it and battled in with the crowds. The uh, Geronimus Monastery, that still stands today. You can see the little horse drawn coaches as they would have been, and I've been to the Coach Museum here in Belém. And I made a vlog of it, I'll link it in the description for you if you like. It's a long time ago that I vlogged it. My daughter was little then and she was in the videos as well. Um, but yeah, so it kind of, it's a bit more meaningful to me because I have seen a lot of these actual coaches. Things do tend to be more meaningful, I think, if you can link it to experiences that you've actually had. They can be a bit more abstract and more difficult to take in otherwise. Castillo de San Jorge, we went there in a vlog a couple of vlogs ago. There it was as represented by this panorama. This may be all quiet and whispering, and that lady over there is having a good old chit-chat to the attendant. We've got cannons here, look. I can tie this into something else I've already vlogged about, the Say Cathedral, the Basilica. There it was, look. I'm not sure exactly when it was made, other than before 1755. Perhaps I'll try and ask it in the guard. It's engaged in a conversation at the moment, though. Ah, look, right at the end here. Mosteiro de Madre de Deus. And it's actually now, it's the building that we're in right now. So it was founded in 1509, but it's now the <coughs> National Tile Museum. And there it is in tile form. How appropriate. Okay, I just asked, and it was about 50 years before the earthquake, that's when it was made. So about 1700. In true Imo Grand Day Out style, I'm having a coffee. I've looked at everything now. I loved it, I loved it. Anyway, I had a coffee that was 170, that was 250, so that's a croissant with cheese. Whole lot came to 420. Mm, much needed. Look at that lovely outside area. The thing is, I think because it's a bit later in the day, they're starting to sort of nudge the chairs in, I think, to deter you from going out there and making a mess. I think they've probably cleaned them. So I'm sitting in, but it's a very serene and nice environment. Obviously, I'm surrounded by tiles with a the kitchen theme. I had one of these for the first time yesterday in yesterday's vlog when I met the frugal travellers and I wanted to tell you how much they were but I lost the receipt but it was under five euros for me and IB to have breakfast which included a croissant, pastel de nata, orange juice and a coffee. Normally it's like a beaker I asked for made a to half of milk like this one and offered to pay more for it but they just gave it, they just gave it to me for the same cost anyway. IB caved in and had to eat, he just took one look at them and had to have them so there we are. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. Mm, 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 mm. 
that was really really fun i'm heading off home now well not home but back to the apartment i was thinking earlier i might get the bus back but actually i'm gonna walk because it's not too bad it's a bit of a trek but it's good for getting your steps up I can't believe how much I really, really enjoyed that. I thoroughly recommend that as a day out, if that's your kind of thing that you're into. There are a lot of different nationalities all exploring sort of quietly around. It's funny, isn't it? The different places you go to, you kind of get different sorts of people. And these ones were all kind of quiet and thoughtful and calm and observing. Yes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. To watch more videos from me, click here.